Hello everyone, this is me, yes, I'm AK No Brainer, welcome to another Artifact video! Another tournament, this time hosted by Artifact Inn! As you can see up there, Artifact Inn's Monthly Cup number 1A! That's right, this is a draft tournament hosted by Artifact Inn. The idea here is that you get into the top 16 and then you get invited to another tournament uh, happening on the 22nd of December. Uh, where you will compete for a hundred dollars first price prize. Not a lot of money, not a lot of money compared to some tournaments, but you know, it, I had time on Saturday, it's a fun little just event to take part in, so I thought, you know, why not, because I couldn't get into any of the bigger tournaments, guys, I'm sorry. They, they, they fill up so fast, there's only 128 spots in total. If you guys are interested and I do somehow manage to make it into the, into the top 16 of this, um, there is still a B, C, and D of this tournament that will be going on over the coming Saturdays. Uh, so let's start drafting. Now, I actually have some experience drafting because I have played a lot of... I, I have, um, I have got six perfect wins... Sorry, six perfect runs with the starting five tickets. Uh, I'm still on the starting five tickets, actually. Uh, so the idea here that I like to go with is just choose the best cards and uh, hope that works out. Solar Khan is good, but not the best in draft, because if only a six health, she dies to something like an Ursa or something, who are very common. But I really like Hitfire, so I'll take Hitfire and Dimension Portal, which are just the two best cards here. Uh, just gonna keep going through it here. Um, ew, this is... This is already a massive, uh, not great here. Well, so the deck's the only good red card up here, I feel. Uh, Bellow can move a creep, which I guess is something. Um, Sucker Punch might be worthwhile just to have as a stun. Generally, all of this is terrible, I'm gonna be honest. Let's just grab the Bellow. Uh, Darkseer, he's an okay hero, but not the best. So I'm gonna get greedy, I'm gonna keep going here. Um, Sator and Avernus, sure. Ursa, um, Ursa's good in draft, but I don't like red, um, they tend to have really bad cards, you know, if there's any time you're gonna just go and hope for a really good final, uh, you know, final hero, you might as well do it in the first pack, see how this goes, uh, I think I could get better than Ursa as just a random, honestly, so we'll go with forward charge, that's at least some sort of siege sort of thing where I can... Uh, modify my arrows a bit. Crystal Maiden is terrible, no thank you. Let's go with Iron Fog Gold Mining. Uh, Shield I don't like, we'll go with Collateral Damage. Timbersaw, okay, so he's terrible. Good good to have, good to have. Uh, Viper's pretty terrible as well, we'll go with a Bronze Legionnaire, we are in sort of red-ish. Bolt of Damocles is alright for a blue to finish with. I like Steel Strength a lot, uh, it's red. I like Steel Strength a lot though. Uh, Rix is interesting in that I can easily, uh, play green, um, without having any other green hero because Rix just has that rapid deployment, he's always going to be around. But a Ghoulie Vangal Vandal is a fantastic black card. And so is Oath. Those, these are two absolutely fantastic cards. Um, I think I could do better than a Rix, potentially. Potentially. It's not, an e it's not an easy call. Um, the thing is, so, um, what's her name? Uh, Debbie is really good just as a black hero. Uh, she's a basic black hero you can slot in after the draft's over for free. Um, and she's good, so it's always good to just pull black. Because I really like black in general uh, in this in this game. Um, so Naguli Vandal is definitely the sort of thing I'd be interested in taking. Oath seems a little risky for me. So we'll do this. We won't take the Ricks. We'll see what we get. Skyrath. Skyrath's actually good in draft because he actually can clear heroes. Uh, but I only have a dimensional portal. That's not the that's not the color I'm trying to go at the moment. Vestra of the Tyrant, on the other hand, is really good if I get a deck that can play around it. Lion. Again, not 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 the best. Um He can he can finger people. He can finger a death for eight damage, but he's really not. Not the best, I might rather even take a Debbie, but then again, I've got nothing else on this set that I'd be interested in. I guess I'll grab the Shield of Basilius, keep going for this random hero. Magnus, okay, Magnus is decent in draft. Um, Magnus is in power, can actually do something, so he's actually a decent character. And we'll grab Cunning Plan as well. Uh, Smash their defenses is actually good for red, so we'll, we'll do that. Maybe we can draft some red. Arm the Rebellion is okay. I have no idea how the hell I'm supposed to value Champion of the Ancient. He... 
I guess really good if you've got a lot of enemies on the lane. But if you've got a lot of enemies on the lane, you tend to lose already. For 7, he's not amazing. I'm just gonna grab double on the rebellion, honestly. Oh, this set. Um, Stonehill Cloak is good as an item. It's a good, good item. And one for me is also not terrible when I've got a Vestra of the Tyrant. Uh, but Thunderstorm can actually clear. And that might be good if you're bluing a bit. I just says my heroes are pretty terrible for what I'm drafting here, but I'm just gonna keep drafting the best thing I can and hope it all works out in the end. Uh, that tends to be how I play this stuff. Tower Barrage is decent, and so is Defend the Weak. Well, no, Defend the Weak's not good either. not that great, but it can do something. So I can pick a fight. Stonehill Pike's not a terrible item, but we go, we'll go with this. Nothing's really standing out to me so far in terms of a power yet. Not getting anything that, that makes you go, ooh, yeah. I'll get Poison Strike instead, just because I've got a Timbersaw. Uh... I don't have a lot of expensive things. I could grab a Salamini's favor, but ramp is not that useful. Um, even in the late game. I mean, let's be honest, I don't need a Book of the Dead at all. Like, at all. Or a Cloak of Endless Carnage. Bloodseek. Okay, so this is a terrible hero lineup I'm looking at so far. Uh, a second Bloodseek. No. Uh, we'll get uh, Slay and the Tireless State Sensor, because he's actually decent. Enemy Tower is minus one mana, he's actually decent. Tidehunter, I don't actually appreciate much in draft. Uh, his base attack is just very low. Uh, makes things a bit awkward. Um, Slain pick a fight, yeah, sure. Abaddon. Okay, between Abaddon and who is this character? Magnus, I do get green. Uh, and I do have some green cards. Uh, so this is actually a not terrible green choice. And I'll grab another Stonehill Cloak, because Stonehill Cloaks are amazing. Uh, Marathon Brawler is, uh, at least a creep. He's something. Creeps are really good in draft. Uh, because you could just overwhelm your opponent. They tend to not have that much removal, like with Annihilation stuff. Well, they tend to have removal. It tends to be, like, single target, so. Yeah, grab this. Uh, another Payday. Uh, Payday's... You, you're way too greedy. Payday can tend to be way too greedy, but there's kind of nothing else I'd want here at all. Like, a Bellow, I guess. Straight from a fog of war. Ugh, okay. So, uh, last pack already, and uh, I t I'm in a big... Things aren't going great, okay? We've got Home Field Advantage and Annihilation, which are both amazing cards, but I don't have any blue at all. So unless I get a massively good blue hero here, I'm gonna have some massive problems. I should probably instead be looking at the two at my colors here. I've got green, I've got red, and I've got black. I do not have much blue. Blue, I have Dimensional Portal, which is okay, but generally I don't have much great here. Um, but the only reason why I've got so much red is because of uh, the Timbersaw, so like... Do I have anything good in red? Bronze Leader, Junair, and a Smash. That's basically it. Um, here I've got a Dimensional Portal, and that's basically it. Here I've got Tyler Sensor Stay, Ogoli Vandal, and a Hitfire, which isn't terrible. This is actually a really bad draft in general. And here I've got two on the Rebellions, but no Creeps. So I really need to be, uh, paying attention to that, so like... I can definitely go for double green and have green as like one of my colors and see if I can get another good black hero. If not, I can always go with Debbie. Um, but do I want to take Annihilation anyway just in case I get a decent yellow, a decent blue? Alright, I'll take Annihilation just in case it is just that good of a card. Uh, Viper I really don't care about either. Um, say to Duelist and uh, Iron Fog, yeah sure. Venomancer. Okay, so he's a decent yellow. He's a decent blue uh, to just drop down. Um, and he does allow me to. He does give me some good creeps with his um, special ability. But I'm looking here, and I'm going to be going like two green, two black, one ye one blue. Uh, uh, I guess I kind of have to. It's just kind of way too important to not have that. To, to, I, I need to have a game plan, and I really just don't have one. Alright, I'm not doing black, red then. Um, so I have our gold mine, sure, and Duke, I guess. This isn't a good, this is not a good draft at all. 
Uh, all right, so let's let's make the best with what we've got. Okay, so we're gonna need a Debbie. We're gonna need an Abaddon. We're gonna need a Magnus. We're gonna need a Veto. And we're probably gonna have another Debbie, honestly, over a Bloodseeker. Bloodseeker's not terrible, right? But he's pretty bad. Um, his ability to heal himself isn't the worst thing in the world. But Debbie's 9 damage to enemies, whereas Bloodseeker's only 7. Uh, and 9 damage can kill all but red. I'm actually really worried about a red matchup here. Uh, let's let's start and grab some of the best stuff. So Annihilation, yes. Thunderhide Pack, yes. Steel Strength, yes. Sata, Sata. Home Field Advantage, Double Arm the Rebellion. Tyler Estate, Ghoulie, Hitfire. Double Slay. It's like two gold mines, maybe even three. Yeah, three gold mines, no payday, probably with Vestures, good enough here. Uh, let's just start grabbing all of those good items because I can. Um, okay, so how much blue do I have? Five? Let's, let's add in that and the dimensional portal and the friendly fire, I guess. Okay, so uh, I'm up to 38 cards. Uh, I have eight blue, which is a bit too much. You generally want about, well, how much is it? 40 divided by 5 is 8, so 8 is the maximum you want for blue. But uh, considering it's Venomancer and he dies quickly, I'm only going to put in... I'll put in the battle 8 and never sure. I'll do the full 8. I'll do the full 8. Uh, he can come in later. Um, black, I have 14. Debbie's kind of die a little on the fast side. Um, compared to the Abaddon and Magnus. Abaddon lasts a really long time, so he's pretty good with uh, having some uh, green in there. Avernus's Blessing isn't the worst thing to have, just to give people some healing. Um, is there anything else I want, though? Uh, because I don't want Paydays. I'll take the Iron Fog Gold Mines over the Paydays any day of the week, because the Paydays require me to keep holding my gold. Um, and that means I can't use it for, for good strength. Now, Assured Destruction sounds good in theory, uh, my heroes are kind of going to die a lot, but Abaddon's going to stick around for a long time. Um, and I don't have that much creeps. I only have six creeps. Like, that is actually really scary. I have six creeps, but I do have a better late than never in a dimensional portal. Um, but only having six true creeps is very scary when I've got double, um, double arm the rebellion up there. Uh, and also Magnus really doesn't synergize well with Debbies and stuff. Might be better to put in a Bloodseeker over a second Debbie. Ah, uh, his ability's kind of okay. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I have two slays. Do I really need to go bellowing? Against enemy creeps, uh, not necessarily. I've got friendly fire and annihilation. Uh, the hard part's going to keep be keeping this Venomancer alive, considering I'm going to annihilate him to death. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be killing him all on my own. Um, I'm okay with this setup of eight, seventeen, fifteen. I'm okay with that. Uh, let's let's just get right out of here. Um, four charge is decent with the Venomancer's creeps. It's not great. It's decent. It's not great. Um, is there anything I want to get rid of in here though? Home field advantage, fantastic. Honor Valley, fantastic. Say to duels. Like everything I've got up he down there, pretty much is fantastic. It's only up here that I get weak, that I get worried. Uh, but I think defend the weak can be very effective. Um to help keep those creeps alive that I am going to eventually need to build up so that I can arm the rebellion on them. So I think that's going to be my game plan here. Do I need a forward charge in that case or an assured destruction? I think forward charge might be more effective than assured destruction here. But all heroes have four seed. It can bite you in the back, in the arse. It really can. But I don't have good late game. I, I kind of want to do like a timing push, a mid game timing push, and then like cl close the game out. And sure, destruction helps with that. I think I'm not going to need the tower barrage. I'm going to put in forward charge over a tower barrage, and we're going to have some nice red, some nice blacks, some green, some blues to to throw in. 
Uh, okay, so thinking about when characters are going to die. So if I put in Venomancer as the as this this guy, he can go into the safe lane. He can block it out. Um, but then I don't get to annihilate very well because he's going to be in the safe lane. Um, and it's going to be difficult to get him out of there because my opponents are going to probably abandon the lane once Venom goes in there. If I put him in there and he immediately dies, of course he doesn't get his his cool effects off. And being able to summon a Plague Ward every fight. But he then doesn't die. Uh, but he then comes back turn 6 to immediately be able to be annihilated. Uh, but if I put him in immediately, if he dies, it's no big deal. He comes back turn 5 and then turn 6 I can annihilate. And that doesn't... The mass doesn't quite add up there, actually. Put him as the safe lane is probably the best option. So, thinking about my curve here... Um... I, my greens come in turn four. Um, I'm mostly black early on, so I definitely want both Debbies in at the start. Uh, so I think du double Debbie. Uh, but the problem is, I want I want the Veno to land in the safe lane, which means that I'm stuck with just one green hero for the um, all, all the way up until the fifth turn. But I definitely want the double Debbies in here because of my massive black setup for the early game. Um, I've got this, these, all these iron fog gold mines to, to send in. The idea of going, putting Abaddon in the fourth place so that he can join with the Armed Rebellion is not bad. Um, and he can go into the lane where all the creeps go into. So I think we're going to keep Veto in here. Yeah, I hope to draw a dimensional portal, we'll see. Th this deck is very weak. Um, I think Magnus will be able to hold off on his own uh, for a bit. He's got the Euphoric Shields, he can survive himself. And then turn 5 I can drop down and then start playing all this turn 4 stuff I left. Lying around, I guess. Yeah, I think this is what I do. I think this is what I do. I think this is what I register. Oh, contains errors. Right, don't have enough items yet. Let's let's look at items. So Vesta of the Tyrant is fantastic. We'll see if I get to afford it. Uh, it is very expensive. But it is absolutely fantastic. Give my tower plus three armor as well. Uh, like that's the one reason why you might want payday. Uh, I do have paydays, of course. I have two paydays. Um, with the triple iron fog gold mine. The Vestral Tyrant is fantastic. Um, other than that, uh, I think I just want Triple Short Sword, honestly. Just be as cheap as possible so I can get the Vestral of the Tyrant. Uh, the plus two attack is going to be necessary for this Abaddon and this uh, Magnus. Maybe even a Broadsword would be decent for them. Um, but Broadswords cost seven. They're a bit inefficient in terms of ratio to gold. Um, we'll hope I get something good in the Secret Shop, I guess. Uh, Double Stone Hill Cloak will save me heavily here. I could go with the second expensive thing, get you know the Ring of Tarrasque or the Shield of Basilius. Ring of Tarrasque is really good. Because I see what might happen is that late game, I'm going to have a lot of extra gold and nothing to really spend it on. Uh, but honestly, this isn't that killy of a deck, even though it has Debbies in there. This isn't that ki killy. Yeah, this is what I'll take. So I didn't get anything really cool like an Axis or anything like that. So this is a very risky... Very, very risky deck. Um, there's not a lot of creeps, and there's a lot of on the rebellions and stuff, but there is a home field advantage. That can win the game on its own. Uh, there is Annihilation and Friendly Fire. Those can really, really help lock down the Veno lane. What I honestly want is that round four, I like play everything. Round five, I get a TP, so that I can TP Veno out for round six to play him in a light lane to Annihilate with, or something like that. Uh, maybe get a Vestra of the Tyrant line in beforehand. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. I'm going to need to be a bit lucky. Um... But hopefully this goes well. 
Uh, I don't quite know how many deck, how, many, how long I've got to go with this deck before I can uh, redraft, but we will see. We will see. Uh, now I've got to wait 10 minutes for the draft to finish, so I don't have it. I can't really fill this time. So this will be me, Gimsai99, aka No Brainer. Thank you for watching this draft. Hopefully, this will go well. Thank you for watching. Sign off.